Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we are broadcasting live on, on October 2nd, on October 3rd, that is, from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. This hour, we're going to look at reproductive rights in Florida. The state Supreme Court is deciding sometime this fall about whether it will rule on a law that could lead to abortions being essentially banned in Florida. And our guest this hour, at least for part of the hour, is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director for Progress Florida. Welcome back to Tuesday Cafe, Amy. Thank you, Sean. It's great to be here. I'm glad you could join us. So later on in the show, I'm going to play audio from the Florida Supreme Court oral arguments. The reproduct reproductive rights advocates say the state's ban on abortions after 15 weeks violates Florida's constitutional protections on privacy. But as we'll hear, several justices seem skeptical of that claim and might allow the 15-week ban to go into effect. And then if that happens, a newer law that restricts abortions after six weeks in Florida would go into effect. So... Uh, we will talk about that, but let's begin by looking today at whether abortion care is still legal today in Florida, Amy. Well, sure, it is. And um, the 15-week ab um, abortion law has been allowed to be in effect, even as it's making its way through through the courts, the suit against that. So um, it is limited to 15 weeks, but providers throughout the state are, are offering that care to Floridians and people beyond our borders. Has that led to any problems? The fact that if there's someone who's seeking an abortion and they've been pregnant for 15 weeks or longer, that they aren't able to get care in Florida? That's right. And it is a huge source of frustration for, for care providers, for doctors who have trained you know, for years to offer this care to their patients, people who need to end a pregnancy for, a variety, for a, a variety of reasons. And they are now having to arrange for those patients to get to out-of-state out of state, out of state um, care providers at great expense and huge, you know, huge time consumption. Um, and it is, it is a huge issue. And, and in fact, I know of at least one Tampa um, doctor who is a, was is an extraordinary OBGYN, and she has actually left the state. And I think that that we're going to see more and more of that. We've heard we've heard that this has happened in other states with restrictive laws around reproductive health care. That it becomes more difficult to retain qualified physicians and to attract them when politicians are involved with what they can and can't do for their patients' health. And you mentioned that there are some Floridians who are having to go to other states to seek health care because of this new law. And but uh, I'm going to look kind of at the flip side of that. And that is that because Florida has not yet at least out, outlawed abortions completely, there are several states in the South that have much more restrictive laws. And so for the last maybe year or whatever it's been, Florida has been a destination for, for people in the South who are seeking abortions and can't get it in their home states. So this, if this law goes into effect, the six-week abortion law goes into effect in Florida, it wouldn't just impact people in Florida. That's right. It's a, a lack of access in Florida means a lack of access across the Southeast. Um, other states who will continue being able to provide care will not be able to support the number of patients that will be denied care in Florida. And so that means many, many people will have to continue dangerous pregnancies, um, pregnancies that put themselves at risk, and pregnancies that are, are unintended for, for a lot of different reasons. And we're hearing news from Ron DeSantis. He's, of course, the governor of Florida, but also running for for uh, president, for the Republican nomination for president. And so people around the country have been asking him if he is elected president, what would he do on a national, national scale for uh, abortion? And he's kind of been putting that question off, but he recently tipped his hands. Let me read from the AP this morning. When Rodney DeSantis said during last week's Republican presidential debate that he would support a federal ban on abortion at 15 weeks of pregnancy, some anti-abortion activists called it the news that they had been waiting months to hear. But DeSantis's campaign downplayed the comment, and millions of voters probably missed the moment entirely. DeSantis's pledge came during one of many chaotic exchanges on the debate stage after he, a shouted question from Senator Tim Scott. It was another example of the muddiness that voters are encountering as they seek specifics from Republicans regarding abortion policy. 
Since the Supreme Court overturned the federal right to abortion, candidates are being pressed on the issue and sometimes stopping short of giving a straight answer. So um, what would you say then about maybe the politics on the national scale of uh, rights to abortion access and how, how it's playing out on the national scale? Well, first of all, regarding Ron DeSantis, I mean, if anyone has any doubt about his position as an extremist on reproductive health, they only need to look at his track record in Florida, gleefully, gleefully signing um, bans on abortion at 15 weeks, then at six weeks, gleefully line item vetoing access to long acting reversible contraceptives that a bi bipartisan members of the House and the Florida House and the Florida Senate got in the budget multiple years, he line item vetoed that. And that is not abortion. That is birth control. He is he has has found ways to prevent people from accessing. So it is very, very clear where he stands on this and what a emergency he will put our nation in on when it comes to reproductive health if he was ever to get to a high level in federal government. Um, it is very interesting, of course, as a reproductive rights advocate to watch what's happening on the, you know, on the, on the Republican national stage and to see how they, so, um, you know, they love using reproductive health care as a pawn in their reindeer games. And, you know, they, they, they won't be clear intentionally because they, you know, don't want to look as extreme as they are, but they're all, they're all going to use this as a political pawn to win points, to not lose points. They're all just hedging and, um, I don't have much more to say about that, Sean. It's it's just it's just disgusting, actually. Our guest is Amy Weintraub, Reproductive Rights Program Director for Progress Florida. And this is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And let me talk for a second about some polls that have been done about access to abortions. And I'm reading this from a, a summary that happened in The Guardian. 62% of American adults believe that abortions should be legal in all or most cases. That's according to a 2022 report published by Pew Research Center. A 2020 Ipsos Reuters poll found that 56% of likely voters in Florida believe abortion should be legal in most cases. So given numbers like that, Amy, what would you say about uh, how people feel about uh, access to abortion? Yeah, um, both of those polls were done before the six-week abortion ban passed. And I'll just mention an FAU poll that was done late last year, late last 2022, again, before the six-week abortion ban was passed. And, and that found that 67% of Floridians support access to abortion. And we, we have noted that those the research I have seen has seen an uptick in support since the six-week ban passed. I think people didn't really weren't fully awakened to um, how bad things were gonna get and that a six week ban is almost an all out ban because people don't realize that they're pregnant until it's at, they're about, they've missed a period and then it's two weeks and oh my gosh. So anyway, um, so on that note, um, I would say that the support for abortion rights is stronger than it's ever been. And that is why we're going for this ballot initiative. And I know we're going to talk about that in a minute, but the support for it is so good. And it is so out of sync with what the decision makers in Tallahassee are doing that um, we, you know, we, we do have like a, a real serious societal conflict right now. So what is this ballot initiative? What does it say? What would it do if it passes? And where does the signature count stand? Sure. So just the ballot initiative, we as a reproductive rights movement see it as the way forward to get a constitutional a, 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 a constitutional amendment that explicitly states that abortion is accessible to Florida, should be, will be accessible, is accessible to Floridians um, up to the point of viability. And that is what we are hoping to get on the ballot for the, the November 2024 election. In order to do that, like all ballot initiatives, if people in Florida want it, it, thank goodness we have this alternative, by the way, many states don't. But in Florida, citizens can rise up. If the legislature's not addressing it, we can say, let's put the vote to the people. And that's what we're trying to do. In order to do that, we have to get, we have to show 
the, the division of elections, that there is widespread support for that. And they are requiring for anyone to get something on the ballot, nearly 900,000 um, petition forms have to be completed. That's 891,523 to be exact. And so we're working right now to get um, Floridians who care about reproductive rights to complete these petition forms. And I think you were asking how far along are we? Yeah, where do we stand? So we launched in early May. So in just, in just what is that, like five months, um, the official tally that is that they've been collected and they've been validated by county supervisors of election. Um, the official count on the division website, division of elections website is almost 300,000. So that's 298,120 have been collected as of, have been validated as of today. Now we know that we have collected far more, hundreds of thousands more than that. They just have to, they just take a lot of time getting through the validated validation procedure at the county level. And then for the county to report to the state and then it to get posted to the website. So we know we're much farther along, but that number is the one that we can, that's the only official number we have to go by. What's the next goalpost? Is there, in order to get it approved by the Supreme Court, is there a certain level and so forth? Yeah, um, that's correct. It's not just a matter of collecting the petitions. The language that has been put together um, by our movement, movement leaders and, you know, constitutional law experts and other, you know, great thinkers has to be approved by the Supreme Court because ballot measures in Florida, they can't just be anything. Someone happens to, you know, cobble together. It has to meet certain language standards. It can only be about one thing. It can't be a multi-issue um, um, item. So the Supreme Court must review it. And in order for the Supreme Court to begin its review, folks, uh, a certain number of signatures have to be collected. So they're not going to review just anything, right? They have to see a certain level of report and a uh, cer certain level of support. And so that number is 222,881. So we, since we've collected 298,000, we've, we've more than met that. So that review um, has begun. I want to remind people that our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director for Progress Florida. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And I want to hear what our listeners have to say about it. We'll be taking calls and texts and emails throughout the hour. You can email us at dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885, or you can call 813-239-9663. And we're broadcasting live here on October 3rd, 2023. And we, we do have a, a call that has come in from Simon in Lakeland. Let's see if we can get Simon on the air for a quick question. Hi, Simon. What's your question? Hi, good morning. Uh, you know, the, the premise of the discussion is about rights. Uh -huh right of the female, the woman, um, my body, my choice. My question to your guest is, does the fetus in the womb, it's a two-part question, have any rights? Because obviously if you were in a car accident and you were drunk and you hit a woman that was pregnant. And so the first part is, does the fetus have rights? And what's the second part, Simon? My question is, is the fetus property? All right, thank you for that question. And Amy, how would you respond to those questions? Well, um, I can't, you know, everyone in America has the right to their opinions about a variety of things. But what we do know is that abortion is a critical part of every contemporary modern healthcare system. And there are a huge variety of reasons that people need abortion care, everything from birth control failure to medical reasons to socioeconomic reasons. And for true equity in our society, it is critical that people have access to the full spectrum of reproductive health care, everything from sex ed to contraception to abortion care. And I know that majority of Americans support that. And it, it is really, really critical that we are out here 
making sure that the people's voice on this is heard and that religious doctrine or personal feelings about pregnancy do not trump what is necessary and what the people want. Well, thank you for the question, Simon. And I want to remind people that our guest is Amy Weintraub, Reproductive Rights Program Director for Progress Florida. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Later on in the show, we're going to hear some of the oral arguments that brought up some of these issues in the in front of the Florida Supreme Court uh, that was just a few weeks ago. But first, I want to read this text message that comes in from Wendy, who asks, where can I go to get my peti petition or how? Is there an online form or some other way that people can, can go to get this? Oh, what a great question. Thank you. Um, it's really important that people know how to participate in this petition gathering process. And FloridiansProtectingFreedom.org, that's FloridiansProtecting, I'm so sorry, FloridiansProtectingFreedom.com, FloridiansProtectingFreedom.com is the website that folks can go to, to to complete the petition form and then print it out and then sign it. The address to mail, where to mail the form is a Sarasota PO box. It's on the form itself. Um, they do require these forms to be, you know, hard copy. So folks do have to mail it in. They can also drop it off at a, a, a local hub. Every Almost every county in Florida has a hub. So, and that's available on the website, FloridiansProtectingFreedom.com, um, the map of where all the hubs are. Forms can also be picked up if folks don't have printers. They can be picked up at those hubs as well. And let me ask you about uh, this news that I was reading in Florida politics yesterday. They were reporting that the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is criticizing Congress member Maria Alvira Salazar over her support for a bill that would limit access to an abortion pill, Mifepristone. It, went, it was part of negotiations over avoiding a government shutdown, the DCCC. DCCC thinks that Salazar's South Florida congressional seat is one that they can flip next election. You don't have to talk about the politics of, of that, but just the, this point about where um, access to Mifepristone was kind of being negotiated as part of uh, a deal when it came to avoiding the government shutdown. Oh, yeah. It's again, again, an example of, of reproductive health care being used as a as a pawn in these political games and uh, it's you know it's an outrage there's no other health care product or service that is used in these negotiations the way that abortion care abortion medicine is mifepristone is a critical drug um, that is needed and chosen by more than half of the people patients um, accessing abortion care instead of surgical abortion. And there are a lot of reasons that people would prefer abortion medication over a procedure, and they should have the right to pick that. Further, there are more and more people accessing abortion pills outside of the traditional American healthcare system. They are ordering these pills online, and there are safe and supported ways of doing that. And, and people should be able to access this care legally. Now, the next question I want to ask you is about these pregnancy centers. Now, the state calls them crisis pregnancy centers. You call them something else. What are they and why are you concerned about them? Um, yes. So anti-abortion centers, I call them that because that's what their mission is, is to prevent abortion, to talk people out of, of getting getting abortions and, and you know influencing them to continue their pregnancies. They often set up right beside actual women's health care centers that offer abortion care. A great example of this is in right in our region, in Polk County and Lakeland, Lakeland Women's Health Center, a, a great comprehensive health care center, the only, um, the only doctor's office that provides abortions in all of Polk County. Is so they're located on a, a, a commercial street. And guess who opened right beside them? A place called options for women. And they open right beside them in the hopes of kind of tricking people into thinking that that's the actual healthcare center, not Lakeland Women's Healthcare Center. Well, that's just one of their MOs. They do all kinds of things to trick people into having to stay, like they'll have people change um, into an exam gown in one room and move them to another room so they'll be separated from their belongings, making it harder for them to leave. 
even though they aren't necessarily providing actual medical care. So anyway, yes, these places exist to talk women out of out of getting abortions. And the 15 week abortion ban, I'm sorry, the six week abortion ban bill that passed this past spring came with a funding measure, $25 million to go to these entities that again, do not provide actual healthcare services, but in fact, you know, are, are trying to deny people access to their care. It is just, a, it's a, it's just ridiculous, especially when you consider all of the other social, actual bona fide um, social health care, social and health care services that are going underfunded. All right. I'm going to read a couple of emails and texts that came in, and then we'll go to David in Sarasota in just a second. First of all, I know someone was a, someone else was asking about the website to download the information or the form to fill out regarding the ballot initiative. And again, that's FloridiansProtectingFreedom.com. Also, David writes in, he says, I find it hypocritical that these politicians claim that they are against abortion when many of them have ordered abortions for their own mistresses. And David says, wake up fools. And then he says, uh, he, he makes a suggestion about Matt Gates and his um, underage mistresses that, that I've probably repeated enough of, about. I don't need to go any further, but thanks David for that email. Um, and so let's let's hear now from David in Sarasota. This is a different David. Hi, David. What would you like to say? I think you got my my same question. I was the one that asked about uh, being able to sign a petition to get that on the, the constitutional amendment passed. But uh, thank you, anyways, and it's a great show. Okay, thanks so much, David. Bye. Bye. So, Amy, I think we'll probably wrap up this segment so I can play some of the Florida State Supreme Court arguments that happened just a few weeks ago for the rest of the show, but people are still welcome to call in. I want to thank you so much for coming back on to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe today, Amy. Such a pleasure, Sean. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad you could come on. Well, as I said, we are going to play for the rest of the hour. We're going to hear some of your comments, but also I'm going to uh, hear, we're going to hear from the Florida Supreme Court. That was Amy Weintraub, Reproductive Rights Program Director for Progress Florida. And she's also a member of WMNF's Community Advisory Board. So I want to thank you, thank her for that service as well. 